Hello everyone and today I'm excited to talk about Azure Shared Disk which is something absolutely new in Azure and in Preview right now. In order to use that feature you need to register for the preview. Okay, so hello everyone my name is Arun and let's get started. Azure Shared Disk, well it is a feature for Azure Managed Disks that enable you to attach a managed disk to multiple virtual machines simultaneously. All right, this is something new and first time in Azure. Let's try to understand what it is and how it works. So if I have a, a VM, let's suppose this is my Azure VM and Azure VM would have two kind of disks attached to it, right? Okay, we have two disks attached to two type of disk that we can attach to an Azure VM. Okay, what are those? A data disk and an OS disk, right? Cool, and uh, let me write this down and OS disk and a data disk. Okay. And if it if this is attached to Azure VM, let's say one, we cannot attach this disk to Azure VM two. Because Azure VM2 would have its own data disk and OS disk, right? Just like this. Okay. But now with this feature, Azure Shared Disk, what can we do? We can share the data disk in between the VMs. See, it is something very exciting and it will solve a lot of problem and it will help the administrators in doing uh, uh, cluster migrations or developing a new application for the clusters. Okay, so what it means, let me show you in the architecture so that it will make you let's move this okay let's move this move this here like this it has its OS disk and this disk let's make this mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so these two VMs can share the same data disk now. This is what the Azure Shared Disk is. And this data disk is what kind? There are a few things that we need to remember. It should be, hold on, hold on, don't go like this. Yeah. It should be managed disk, okay? And as I said, this feature is in preview, so of course there would be uh, limitations, too many. But once it's in the GA, the limitations would be narrowed down as much as possible. <clears throat> we all know every source has some kind of limitation, so we should be aware before we use it. So what's its limitation is, it can only be used on managed disk and premium. So you can say premium managed SSDs. Okay. And what is the another one is like this. This entire. Okay. This entire structure or these VM 
should be like this like this come on yeah these vm that you're going to use this azure shared disk should be in proximity placement group we have already talked about proximity placement groups the entire architecture theory and the practical if you see the previous videos or under the same playlist you'll find it proximity placement group <clears throat> okay and this azure shared disk this feature this can only be enabled on data disk that's what we did not the os disk as of now only the data disk and for now it is only supported in west central us region okay and azure backup and site recovery is not yet available for this kind of architecture for azure shared disk okay and even in the premium ssds this feature is supported by p15 and greater than p15 okay all right okay let's uh. And when we deploy or create or work on this disk, when we enable, the, enable this feature, shared disk, there is an attribute. There is an attribute called max share. That's value could be from two to five also depends on uh, disk type for example p15 to p20 p15 to p20 can have maximum two max share max share would decide how many machines can talk to the same data disk all right okay so if you want to have five vms connected to this you should choose p60 oh sorry p30 40 or 50. if you want the value of max share to 10 then it could be 60 70 or 80. okay so these are a few limitations that you need to keep in your mind and i'm pretty sure these are until this feature is in preview and a lot would be changed when it would be generally available and you can submit your feedback on the feedback form as well if you're using this okay the beauty is the iops and bandwidth limits for a disk are not affected by the maximum share value for example if this vm has if this vm has let's suppose one one zero zero it's a p15 vm and iops is one one zero zero now max share is one or more than one it would remain the same okay iops is equal to one one zero zero now if the max share is one or Two, doesn't matter it would not get hampered okay okay now let's talk about how can we utilize this okay we, we understand what Azure shared disk is, the few limitations, where can we use it, how it works, those things. 
and how we can access this that can be done with the help of cluster manager not just like SMB and NFS okay so <clears throat> this shared disk do not natively offer a fully managed file system that can be accessed using SMB or NFS but you need to use a cluster manager like Windows failover cluster that handles cluster node communication as well as write locking okay now VM in the cluster can read or write to your attached disk okay based on the reservation chosen by the clustered application using SKRZ persistent reservations and enabling SKRZ PR or SCSI PR on a managed disk allows you to migrate or create an application which can use this feature like both the VMs talking to the same disk only by enabling SKRZ PR SC SI persistent reservations okay now <clears throat> let's talk about few uh, workloads that can uh, use this or where we should use this feature like SQL server failover cluster instances scale out file servers file server for general use or remote desktop server user profile disk those kind of thing okay <clears throat> now let's try to understand how this thing works okay so what happens let's suppose this is a cluster application this is a cluster application all right <clears throat> and this is uh, DB not on the VM but here this is example we are talking about a DB fail over okay <clears throat> now both the VMs connected to the same data disk and persistent reservation is enabled okay now how this works the clustered application running on both the VM1 and VM2 register its intent to read or write to the disk okay both will register their read and write okay read and write <clears throat> both these we register to data disk which is enabled for persistent reservation or share now let's suppose v1 takes exclusive reservation to write to the disk okay if v1 takes exclusive reservation to write to the disk the reservation is enforced on your azure disk and the database can now exclusively write to the disk any write from application instance on vm2 will not succeed okay so if vm1 takes the exclusive write VM2 would not be able to write anything only VM1 will write and if this one is down only then VM2 can talk to the data disk that's how the failover works okay <clears throat> and let's suppose forget about the database these are just the applications or we can say clustered application so same thing would happen both the VMs will register themselves for you know read and write at the first and then V1 let's suppose takes the exclusive reservation to write to the disk while opening up reads to the disk from the other VMs okay so only this one will write to the data disk but you can read from these vm2 can read from data disk it will not write but can read so this situation can also help in so many cases right 
So uh, this is about Azure Share Data Disk architecture, how it functioned, everything. And I have registered to enable this preview feature in my lab. As soon as it is done, I'll definitely share the lab. Thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.